Welcome to this presentation on SQL multi-tenant databases. In this session, we will explore designing databases for multi-tenant applications. Let's get started. What exactly is multi-tenancy? Multi-tenancy is a software architecture where a single instance of the software serves multiple customers. Each customer, also known as a tenant, has their own dedicated resources, ensuring that they can operate independently. Data isolation between these tenants is absolutely crucial to maintain privacy and security. Multi-tenancy optimizes resource utilization, which reduces overall costs and makes the system more efficient. There are different data architecture models for multi-tenant databases. The first one is database per tenant. In this model, there is a separate physical database instance for each tenant, which provides complete isolation. The second model is schema per tenant. Here, there is a single database, but each tenant has their own schema, which balances isolation and resource sharing. The third model is shared schema. This involves a single database and schema, where a tenant ID column and tables is used to distinguish the data of each tenant. Now, let's explore the database per tenant model in detail. The advantages of this model are that it provides maximum data isolation, allows for independent scaling per tenant, simplifies backup and recovery processes, and offers the flexibility of custom schemas for each tenant if needed. On the other hand, the disadvantages include higher infrastructure costs due to the need for multiple database instances, complex management at scale, and increased maintenance overhead. On the screen, you can see an example of how the connection string would look like and the database creation statement. You can also see how tenant identification is done in the application code. Next, let's discuss the schema per tenant model. The advantages of this model include good data isolation, lower infrastructure costs compared to separate databases, simpler management, and easy schema updates across all tenants. However, the disadvantages are that it can lead to database resource contention, there is limited schema customization for each tenant, and backup and recovery processes can be more complex compared to the database per tenant model. On the screen, there is an example of creating schemas for tenants and then creating tables inside that tenant schema. Also, there is an example of querying with the tenant schema prefix. Finally, let's examine the shared schema model. The advantages of this approach are the lowest infrastructure costs, the simplest maintenance, efficient resource utilization, and the easiest schema updates across all tenants. However, there are significant disadvantages, including minimal data isolation, a risk of data leakage between tenants, it is hard to customize for specific tenants, and complex data migrations. On the screen, you can see an example of creating a table with tenant ID column, and then filtering records based on that tenant ID column. Keep in mind that you should always include the tenant ID in the WHERE clause. There are some design patterns you can incorporate for multi-tenant database designs. One of them is row-level security. With row-level security, you can enforce access control at the database level with security policies that filter rows based on tenant ID. Another design pattern is connection middleware. You can intercept database connections to set tenant context before executing queries. Also, you can use query interceptors, which automatically modify SQL queries to include tenant filtering before execution. Another design pattern is tenant routing. You can route tenant database connections to the appropriate database instance or schema based on tenant ID. To optimize the performance of multi-tenant databases, several strategies can be employed. Always index tenant identification columns to optimize filtering. Implement efficient connection pools to reduce overhead. Cache frequent queries on a per-tenant basis to minimize database load. Additionally, partition tables based on tenant ID for better query performance. On the screen, you can see examples of how to create index on the tenant ID column, and then also how to do table partitioning by tenant. Effective data migration strategies are essential when setting up multi-tenant databases. The first phase is planning. 
analyze the existing database structure, and identify tenant-specific data. Define a tenant identification strategy, assess data volume and complexity, identify shared versus tenant-specific data, and choose the appropriate architecture model. The second phase is implementation. Execute the migration with minimal disruption to services. Create tenant identification structures, use ETL processes for data transformation, implement incremental migration, and maintain data integrity with transactions. The third phase is validation and cutover. Ensure data integrity and switch production traffic to the new system. Validate data consistency and integrity, run parallel systems during transition, implement blue-green deployment, and plan rollback procedures. Here are some of the best practices for multi-tenant databases. Security first. Implement strict security policies to prevent cross-tenant data access. Use row-level security and encrypted tenant identifiers. Monitor performance. Set up tenant-specific monitoring to identify resource-heavy tenants and optimize their queries independently. Plan for scale. Design with future growth in mind. Choose a model that allows for scaling both in number of tenants and data volume per tenant. Automate management. Create scripts for tenant provisioning, schema updates, and maintenance tasks to ensure consistency and reduce overhead. Backup strategy. Implement tenant-specific backup and recovery procedures to enable selective restoration without affecting other tenants. Health metrics. Develop tenant-specific health metrics to quickly identify issues and maintain service level agreements for all customers. If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Visit CodeLucky.com for more such useful content.